think we got that out of the way. So what do you say that we start playing some baseball, Alex? Oh, let's what do you totally say? do that. All right. That's why I'm here. So here we are. We are on the Reds' homepage. Alex, where do you want to start? You just want to sort of summarize a couple things, and then we'll yeah. just jump right into it, right? Let's, let's talk about kind of what we did last episode in case people didn't catch that because we did a ton of trades last week. Um, I think we did seven in total trades. So – on top of the whole entire OOTP Now episode about how I do trades, right. last week was a great demonstration of what those trades would look like. Some are probably going to be good and some are going to be bad. It just depends on how the out, uh, the turnout does for some of the players involved. So let's start with that. So if you go to the Rosters and Transactions tab and then go to the Transactions log, we may have to go back to November because we, def- we, we did actually simulate a few days. Oh, this is our tiny font, too. We were going to up the oh, font, and we didn't do it. Going to. Damn it. <laughs> uh, I keep forgetting to. Uh, yes. We will one day. Eventually. One day we'll do it. But, um, yeah, you may have to go. Oh, no, you're already on November. Awesome. Okay, good. So we're going to want to review just the trades that we did, and they'll be a little bit uh, lower on the screen. But we did a trade to the Cubs twice. We traded to the Orioles, the Twins, the Yankees, the Rays, and the Dodgers. And most of the deals were involving players that we really didn't feel would benefit the team in the long term or in the short term. And we got rid of them for players that we thought would be either long-term potential prospects. Um, Now, my microphone's too low again. Hold on. Yep, I just bumped you up. Okay, good. Um, But we went ahead and did a bunch of deals that involved uh, getting players who are going to be good in the long term, hopefully, um, and a couple players who are good in the short term. So... For example, the Yankees deal. We traded away Cody Reed for a couple of really good four-star prospects in Antonio Cabello and uh, Alex Guerrero. But then we also included in that deal uh, acquiring 25-year-old Luis Severino, and the uh, the Yankees got 5% of his contract retained in that deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We also traded with the Dodgers. We traded away Tyler Molly, one of our starting pitching people but Mm -hmm. we got in that deal uh we got caleb ferguson who is a pretty decent relief pitcher slash potential starting pitcher um we also picked up jaron kendall a very good center field prospect that we would hopefully like to see become as good as maybe better than taylor trammell that's what we're hoping for but it might not be we'll see but then we also included in that deal um a 23 year old minor league catcher connor wong in that deal he's a four-star potential catcher who our scout likes And uh, we're hoping he can develop into that full potential. Um, We did some really wonky trades as well. We traded away one of our, uh, one of our better shortstop prospects, Jose Israel Garcia to the Rays. And we got back Willie Adamas in that deal. Uh, Adamas can play third base, second base and shortstop. So he's a very interesting person for us to be able to uh, throw out on the team on the field this coming year. Um, In fact, that's going to be one of the biggest questions for you, Rich today is where does Adamas end up playing? Mm. Because he can technically play uh, two different positions that we're going to be trying to fill holes for. So he'll mm-hmm. cover one of them. But depending upon what you would like to take the team in the direction that you'd like to take them, um, he'll be either playing third base or shortstop. Okay. Um, since technically he is our shortstop, but we got, as a free agent in last stream, we got Yoshi. We got a new shortstop named Shinichi Yoshioka. We signed him to an eight-year, $137.5 million contract, and he can play center field, third base, and shortstop, which are all of the three positions that we have to fill for our team. So he'll take one. Adamus will take another. Um, We technically have Senzel, who could play third, but really should be playing second. And um, there's just a lot of different moving parts right now with the team. And we've got a lot of stuff to run through today. Um, There's a couple other trades we did. They weren't as consequential. Um, We did trade away Jose Iglesias, hence the reason why we have a shortstop hole at the moment. Uh, He went to the Cubbies, and we got a couple of really good uh, prospects from them. Uh, A closer, two starting pitchers, and a pretty decent left fielder. Um, We also traded away uh, Michael Lorenzen in that deal and Mike Ciani. And then, of course, the last couple of deals we did was a one-for-one deal with the Cubbies to get Albert Almora. He is projected to play center field for us if we don't get another center fielder this season. 
And then we traded away Lucas Sims and Clayton Blackburn and Jose Reyes and Ricky Salinas to the Minnesota Twins in a pretty massive deal that took uh, that brought us back Tyler J, Fernando Romero, Nick Gordon, retaining 60% of, I think, his contract, uh, Brent Rooker, who's a good first base prospect for us, and Akil Badu, who is a right field prospect. So we've done a lot of moves, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes. Me too. Um, Me too. I can't wait. Oof, we just have so, our depth in AAA and AA is going to be so good this coming season. I, I, and I'm really glad we also got really good personnel for our AAA and AA squads because they will dominate. Uh, they will absolutely crush any opposition in AA and AAA this coming season. If they don't win it, if they don't win first place, I will be very disappointed <laughs> in myself, unfortunately. I will be disappointed in you as well, Alex, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> oh, man, the pressure and everything. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so we also were, we did a couple of free agency attempts. We did try to get Donaldson. Yes. So the last part we had actually simmed up to last week yes. was Donaldson coming back to us and saying that the Brewers right. beat our offer. Right. And unfortunately, Rich, I don't have us projected to get Josh Donaldson if the Brewers are going to try to beat us for him. Understood. Um, once you start getting into the $16 million and above range, we just signed Yoshioka. We really don't have money for another Yoshioka-type player with Understood. Donaldson. That's okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just what's going to unfortunately happen. I I'm okay with that. So... Um, before we get into any free agency stuff, contract stuff, um, one of the things that we haven't talked about actually is one of the other mail messages that you got. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Moustakis got back to us, mm -hmm. actually. So mm -hmm. if you go back to your mail really fast, yes. the shall we resume negotiations, Mike Moustakis is actually interested in talking about a contract. So we're going to switch gears from okay. Donaldson to Moustakis because – He'll be cheaper, and if we have money by the end of the stream, we may make an offer for him. Okay, we good may. to know. I like it. And and that will be the one thing that we do this offseason that will mirror reality because the exactly. real Reds did sign Mustaka. So yes. in, our, in our insane fantasy world where you are just <laughs> cutting and cutting and cutting, we might actually have one thing that matches what the real guys did. It still may happen. That is exactly <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, before we do all of that, yeah. um, I approached Rich over the week about yes. some ideas I had. There are some league cleanup slash commissioner things we wanted to do. So we're just doing this just to alert all the viewers about what we have changed. Yes. Because there are there is one issue that I had to fix and then a whole bunch of players that we decided – um, between me and Rich, that we are going to not ban, but some of them are being retired because of situations in real life that we believe should be reflected in our game. So the one person that we had to change, which was a contract heir, actually, is Matt Carpenter. Um, so if you want to go to Matt Carpenter, Rich, I'll explain kind of what happened. Um, supposedly, not supposedly, but in, in reality, uh, Matt Carpenter was given a contract extension in March, I believe. I believe it was like March 20th. Um, or it was April 10th. I don't remember. It was sometime right before the end of spring training or after spring training. Unfortunately, the live start didn't reflect that change. So we have put Matt Carpenter back on the Cardinals with the updated contract. Mm -hmm. So this will make the Cardinals not go after a third baseman because they already have Matt Carpenter. So... It's kind of good for us and kind of uh, kind of but well, it, it, it's really good for us to be honest. It, it, it knocks the Cardinals back a little bit on their contract they can offer. Um, and it gives them back Mott Carpenter, which in all honesty, he's gonna be a red he's gonna be a Cardinals player for life. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't really feel like as if that's too much to say that he goes back on the Cardinals and it just felt right to kind of at least reflect that and make sure that it looks correct in, uh, in our game. Yep, All right. I agree. So let's talk about the people that we're going to be doing some judicial slash uh, commissioner uh, laying down the, the rules. Right. Um, we have officially retired uh, slash banned Felipe Vasquez from our game. Um, and this is via or because of his pending civil law case. Um, 
I, it just, it just, I don't feel comfortable having him in the game. And I yep. should have realized that when we got started, that I probably should have brought it to Rich's attention earlier. So Felipe Vasquez, the closer for the Pittsburgh Pirates, has officially been retired in our game um, due to his personal life issues. We'll just leave yep. it at that. Understood. Um, we also went ahead and retired Tyler Skaggs. He was supposedly still active in the game somehow. Yeah. He was listed as retired, but he's still an active player. So we went ahead and basically unretired him, re-retired him, and that finally got him out of the system, supposedly. So that might just be a live start problem um, where it just doesn't actually reflect when they have been, well, when they're deceased, unfortunately. So, yep. you know, rest in peace to Tyler Skaggs and... Very sad. And for his family. Yeah, that was sad. Um, we have officially, technically, I don't think I retired these three players, but we have released A.J. Hinch from the Houston Astros, Alex Cora from the Boston Red Sox, and Jeff Luno from the Houston Astros as well. And that was because of the incident with their real-life cheating scandals. Um, we have removed them from their coaching positions and GM positions for their clubs. They are still available, um, but I went ahead and I edited their uh, their managing styles a little bit so they're not as good because of their cheating situation. Um, so we have removed them from their organizations. But they probably will still get hired in a year or two. So, so don't as, worry about that. As they will in real life. Because like, about say, yeah, like, like they will in real life, they will come back. We will see them again. Yeah, there's not a lot of people that have won the World Series that are available to work, so I'm pretty sure they'll be yeah. back in the real world. But okay, very good. We have one more person. We actually, I didn't realize this hadn't been affected in the live start, but Jenry Magia, or Magia, I think is how it's pronounced. Former um, Met. Former Met was banned for life from MLB this Spring, I believe, or was it last year? No, I think it was this spring. Um, and that was for steroid usage. He was the first player ever to be banned for life indefinitely. Um, he was actually still active in our game somehow. Um, so he has been banned, like actually suspended and retired for the rest of his entire career. So uh, so he's out. So he's out. So those are the seven people that we have done some, ju- some administrative work to, Got basically. It. All right. All right. We also did a whole bunch of injuries because, unfortunately, the live start doesn't actually update injuries. It updates 40-man ratings and statistics, but it doesn't do injuries. So I'm just going to run through the list and just list everyone that we did. So there's a bunch of people who had Tommy John surgery. There's a couple suspensions on this list, uh, but we just wanted to update the game so that way teams that – weren't expected to do well in 2020 wouldn't just suddenly do well because the player that was most influential somehow was still active. So the Chicago White Sox, unfortunately have Carlos Rodon uh, and Dane Dooning who are down, down for Tommy John surgery. Yep. Uh, Tyler Naquin or Naquin for the uh, Cleveland Indians has knee surgery. He's out for another 150 plus days. Michael Fulmer for Detroit Tigers. He's down with Tommy John surgery. Corey Nabell was updated for his Tommy John surgery. That's for Milwaukee. Uh, we also have Rich Hill, who technically I think is with Minnesota now. Um, he has Tommy John surgery. Uh, Michael Pineda uh, has been suspended 25 games by MLB, and that was because of, I think, a civil, civil situation. Um, Domingo German was suspended 81 games for steroid usage. That has been updated in our game as well. Aaron Hicks had Tommy John surgery. I think that was like two or three months ago. Um, So he unfortunately has been updated on his injury. David Robertson has been updated for his Tommy John surgery. Anderson Espinoza had his second in a row Tommy John surgery. That was after having his first one, having complications and having to do it again. Uh, Jordan Hicks from St. Louis, unfortunately, had Tommy John surgery. Uh, Jameson Talion. uh, Is it just? No. Tylon, I think is how it's pronounced. I've never gotten that guy's last name spelled or uh, listed correctly. Talon, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, he has his Tommy John surgery. And then, of course, Reyes Moranta from San Francisco had Tommy John surgery. And those were all people who had Tommy John surgery over the course of the season. And the Life Start just didn't actually update those. So we have gone ahead and updated them ourselves. All right. Very good. Very Ooh. good. Excellent work, sir. All right, so where do we go? Where do we go next? Okay, we're gonna start out the day with some trades because that's what we always do. <laughs> that's what we do. That is exactly <laughs> what we do. Oh, um, 
we're going to do some trades. Just, I think, three today. Okay. And, Only three? Um, oh, my gosh. Oh, that's... Three. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm making this real easy on us today. <laughs> but it's just going to be three, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so we need to head over to the trade window and uh, get started on these deals. All right. So let's see here. Where should I go? To the player trade area? Here we go. We're going to head, let's first start by heading to the uh, Detroit Tigers. All right, Detroit Tigers. Yeah. Loaded with prospects. They are loaded with some people we are very interested in. <laughs> yes, Cardinals fan. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All come right. on. It's me. What do you expect me to do? <laughs> All, right. All right. So, from the Tigers, we are going to be picking up Dawell Lugo from the Major League roster. Okay. And he should be emboldened, as he is one of the people that were interested from a short list. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Why don't I see him yet? Oh, that's the uh, prospects list. You'll probably oh, want to go to the it. MLB active roster, because okay. he's, he's no longer a prospect by MLB standards, unfortunately. Got it. So, Dowell Lugo, third baseman, 24-year-old third baseman. Yes. All right. He's not bad. He would be a good bench player for us uh, okay. we're also looking looking for victor reyes he should be a center field person he may be on the major league roster yep there he is right there a 20 25 year old right fielder we're also looking for sergio alcantara he is a shortstop and he also might be on the major league roster actually Let's see. Where is Sergio Alcantara? I don't see He's him. Not, he would be on the prospects list. All right. Let's go prospects. And let's scroll to the top here. Hmm. Sergio Alcantara. I'm Ah, there he is. A 23-year-old shortstop. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right, and then back at the top of that prospects list, we're also going to be adding on Zach Houston. A 25-year-old relief pitcher. That is correct. Okay. And then the last person that we're going to be adding is actually Roger Clemens' son. Oh. We're going to be adding on Cody Clemens to our trade. All right. Yeah. And... Where, is, where am I going to find him? He's going to be on the prospects list, but he has very different listings depending upon if you're seeing him as OSA we're seeing or if OSA. you're having... Actually, no, we're head scouts. Let me OSA this. And let's go OSA potential. Yeah. Unfortunately, he, he may not be boldened because he wasn't yep, actually someone not. as interested I would remember in. that. Yeah. So we're going to take all five of those players. <laughs> <laughs> For free! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have to give some people for him, unfortunately. What? Yeah, I know. They at least want something back for I, it. I agree to disagree with that. They should just hand us these guys. Oh, yeah. I totally agree about that. <laughs> some of the 40-man potential players who are going to be on like a Rule 5 draft. So, yeah, they can just give them to us for free. Why not? Absolutely. Um, we're going to want to go to our prospects list. All right. We're going to want to sort it by position because we're going to go to the catchers. Okay. And this is a typical Alex Murray trade. If the catchers can't catch, he trades them. <laughs> well, you know, there are worse there are worse reasons to trade a catcher. <laughs> exactly. So we're gonna be trading away. One of our catchers is named Edward Barboza. Okay. An eighteen year old. Are you already giving up on an eighteen year old kid? Yeah, yeah, I know. Wow. You are just harsh. But, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Do well, they the, agree tiger, the Tigers like it already. <laughs> okay, so here's the problem. Um, we don't want to just do just the players. We also want the Tigers to retain a bunch of their contracts. Of course we do. <laughs> of course we do. So, uh, if you can make... Let me see who's going to be the top people. So, if you can have Zach Houston retain 100% of his contract... Okay. Why not? We're also going to have them retain uh, 80% of Victor Reyes's contract. You're, you're chuckling while doing this. It's just making yes, it the best. 
That's the best. <laughs> and we're also going to retain 100% of Dawel Lugo's contract. You literally can't help yourself from laughing no, as you're I, doing this. I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, if you ask them to make this work now, uh huh. I want to see what they would say would make it work. Because there should be another catcher named uh, Mark Kolovsvary. Kolovsvary, I think, is his name. He'd be in the K section. Yeah, I don't see him. I see uh, Stevenson and Guerrero as the catchers that they would accept. He's on the uh, prospects list on the left bottom left side. Go ahead and add him to this list manually, and we'll see how much we have to take away on those retaining contracts. All right, which uh, player is this? This is Mark Calls Calls K O L O. Got it. I got him. Z S V A R Y. Yeah, I got him. All right, they're back to liking it again. Oh man! And our and our guy David Littlefield, who continues to have a terrible attitude, does not like it at all. Uh, see if you can add on another couple percentage to uh, Victor Reyes's retainment. All the way to a hundred. If you could go all the way to a hundred, we could do that. Nope, can't agree with it. Ah, uh, can he do ninety-five percent? Nope. What about uh, ninety? No, not ninety. Let's try eighty-five. Force us to go back to eighty. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. Uh, uh, uh. Well, all that, right. that all five percent right. between eighty and eighty-five. He's like, nope, I refuse. Oh. At 85, 80%? You got that's a deal. That's the soda for the team. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, well, that's a pretty good deal. I, I would do that in a heartbeat. So <laughs> so let's do that. All right. <clears throat> so that's the first trade right there. All right, I'm going to complete it. It's been completed. And the reasoning behind that deal is that Victor Reyes is going to be our backup outfielder in AAA. Alcantara is going to be our backup infielder in AAA, right. and Doel Lugo is going to be the same thing. Uh, we're basically building up depth. That's the whole entire reason for that deal was to build up some depth for AAA to make sure that, you know, in the event that Senzel gets injured or, you know, Yoshioka gets injured or anybody on the infield gets injured, we actually have somebody who's pretty much MLB ready and can just slot right in and we're good to go. Excellent. And then of course, Cody Clemens is, if you actually go to Cody Clemens' page, um, OSA has a really big uh, liking to Cody Clemens, I believe. They actually think he's quite the good prospect, so we're hoping that um, he can become as good as they think he can become. Our head scout does not like him as much, but um, he was technically, what was he, like a, he was a third round draft pick, so I have high hopes for him, personal. Plus, it's, 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 you know, it's Roger Clemens' wow. son. What, are we going to say no to that? The OSA ratings versus the head scout ratings are wildly different. They are Amazing. wildly different, yes. Oh, by the way, um, uh, everybody in the chat, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for being here. I, I don't know if I said that earlier. Second of all, <clears throat> in a little while, 20 minutes, 30 minutes max, we'll be doing a giveaway of 20,000 perfect points for two people. All right. How about that? So just want to make sure you knew that. So if you're hanging around, you'll have an opportunity for 20,000 perfect points. Okay, uh, Alex, let's keep on rolling. All right. Trade number two. We're going to go back to the trade screen. We, of course we are. This is going to be our quick deal. All right. Let's see here. Where am I going here? So if you go to MLB transactions and then player trade. Right. Okay. Here we go. All right, we're going to go to the Minnesota Twins because they have a player that we've been interested in for a long time, and they're now finally ready to give him to us for free. All right. That's what I like to see from the Twins. They, is, it, they, is it Bruster Gretarol? I wish it was. Gretarol, uh, Gretarol is, like, really, really good, and he's a starting pitching prospect. So, unfortunately, the Twins will not give us Gretarol. Um, that's just not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, we are more interested in picking up Gabriel Moya. And Gabriel Moya is bolded or not bolded? He should be bolded and also on the major league roster. Okay. And he Let's shouldn't see. be like yep. five Got him. or something Got like him. that. At this By the way, yeah, the two-ton says, this is my first time here. Thank you for being here. Is this what every trade is like? <laughs> yes, with Alex, this is what every trade is like. <laughs> that when is you true. are a ninja genius like alex is this is what trading is like when you have right. hours of your life that you can spend wasting away like this i'm just kidding 
much. <laughs> All right, so you've added uh, Moya onto their side. Yes. Um, they're also going to retain 20% of Moya's contract. Yes. Because <laughs> why wouldn't they? Because why wouldn't they? He's a 24-year-old, uh, you know, five, four and a half to five-star prospect. Why wouldn't you keep paying him even after you yeah. get Moya? It makes total sense. Well, the big reason why they're getting rid of Moya is because they're going to rule five draft him. Mm-hmm. If uh, if they don't get rid of him, so this is the kind of deals that I look out for is mm-hmm. moments where a team is going to get rid of someone for free, and you can just give them a little miners prospect, and they're happy with that because yep. they can take a miners prospect who isn't going to be taking up a forty man spot over a relief pitcher who would take a forty man spot but isn't MLB ready yet. Yep, uh, they don't like that. So if you can go ahead and say make this work now the best button in video games yeah. make this work now we're gonna go all, all the way to the bottom of that list and look uh-huh. for a daniel velohin should be another catcher i believe <laughs> i don't see him on there oh so yeah. <gasps> i can bring him up from the side over here right yeah Who is bring it? Him up from the side instead if you uh, if you see him is it davy gruyon is that who no no we're doing a uh, daniel velohin V E L L O J I N. I don't see. Oh, maybe oh there he is. I got him. There you go. Got, okay, him. got him. They may not want to retain 20% of Moya's contract. That oh, might no, be. They fun. like it. They like it. Oh, they agree. Okay. This wasn't showing it on our listing. And David Littlefield just continues to not like anything we're doing. Why does he even work for us? <laughs> It's just that he, we're doing deals that he's kind of like, well, why would you want to pick up a person who's not really ready for the 40 man roster? This I- is. Bad. Like, After like the seventh one of these, Dave, get with the program. <laughs> oh, good grief. All right. Can we add on more of the retainment for Moya by any chance? Can we go up 5% or are they going to just shut us down? Oh, at 30%, they're close to being agreeable. Can they do 25 then? They, Would that be okay? It's close, but they can't quite agree to it. But uh, at, at 20, to... again, they're like, 25, no deal. Uh... 20, oh. You have a deal. It's like, wow, that, those five All points right. make a big difference, but okay. All right. We can go ahead and accept that for the 20%. You know what's funny, Matrim, is that we actually have had a few deals that both our GM and the other team's GM loved. Like, both of them are like, we love this deal. Do it now. And it's like, really? They like this? <laughs> How do sides like it? A, a, a even Steven deal where either team is like, wow, this is really good for us. So there have been a few. There have been a few where it has worked out for both sides. I'm going to complete this trade right now, right? As that, is? That deal. Okay. It is complete. All right. I saved the big one for last. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, the fun part. So, okay. and again, you are always, always able to say no to a deal if you do not like any of these deals. You okay. can always say no. Okay. All right? Fair. Don't feel bad to pip in and be like, um, I'm not comfortable with this. Cause All right. I'm a little crazy time to t- time. To time. What? Um, but, you know, that's how we got Mookie Betts. So, you know, it, 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 it's a trade-off. You know, Alex gets crazy, we get Mookie Betts. You know, it's, it's a fair deal. <laughs> Dude's going to hit a lot of home runs. We know that. Well, I'm hoping he bats 300. That's that's what I'm really hoping for. Okay. Okay, we need to go to the San Francisco Giants. All right. And um, we're going to add on to their side. We need to go to their prospects list first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Give me your best prospects, boys. Best Much. prospects. We're going to be asking for Hunter Bishop. Hunter Bishop. Why do I know that name? Because he was, I think, just recently drafted. Hunter Bishop. Where is he? Is he um? Is he He's bolded? He's a top prospect player. You'll you'd be better to see it by uh, head scout ratings instead of OSA. OSA and does not like Hunter Bishop. By the way, what's up with the blue names? What does that mean? They mean that they're, I believe, suspended. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I am I am going for who? Are, it's Hunter. What's his face? Hunter Bishop. Okay. So by the, by their by by our guy, he is their top prospect. Literally. Yeah. Their number one prospect. Yes, he is. He is okay. very good. We think he has high, high potential. Uh, <laughs> yes, like Sharon, that. we will look at the depth chart at the end of the stream for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, that's one of the things that we're going to have to have Rich look at and make decisions about is where people are going to play. Okay, good. Because, um, yeah, we have a lot of people who can move around the diamond and play different positions. All right. 
we need to also add on to our list Jonah Arenado. We are finally going to pick up Arenado's brother. Because if you can't get the one Arenado, you get the other. Uh, you know, I have dreams and aspirations that next year, if Arenado opts out of his contract, we end up signing him. But okay. I, I think that's possible. But we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay, now for the big person. We need oh to go boy. back to the uh, Giants' main roster. Oh, boy. What's happening? And I'm can scared. you pick it? Take a guess at who we're getting, Rich. Uh, it's either Jamie, Call- Jamie Callahan or Yandel Gustave or Corey Dickerson or all three of them. <laughs> Actually, it's neither of those players. This is someone that we don't have shortlisted yet. Oh, really? Sean yeah. Anderson. No. We're going to pick up Buster Posey. What? Yes. What? Yes, we are. The best catcher in baseball? Yes, we are. Really? That's a big deal. Oh, it's a huge deal, and it's going to be even better in a second. <laughs> okay. Because knowing me, Rich, yeah, that's what are we going to do? Enough. We're going to take another of their top prospects, of course. Oh, no, no. We're going to retain 85% oh, of the contract. 85%, huh? Very yes, specific. Very specific number. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this works. We'll see if this works or not. All right. Uh, We need to add on to our end of the deal. We are unfortunately going to be trading away Tucker Barnhart. Mm, I don't like that. Starting catcher. But we're picking up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a good. Buster's old, though, right? How old is Buster? He is old. He is. Oh, gosh. I know. Like your 30. your rule, yeah, he's 32. Now, your rule is if you're old and you make a lot of money that you're off the team. But Buster is old, but the Giants will be paying him all the money. Therefore, you are, you're not violating your rule, but but that that's why this is something that you want to do, right? That is why we can do this because we'll be paying Buster Posey about $3 million. Right. Which is about the same amount of money as we're paying Tucker Barnhart right now. Right. So if we're paying Posey or Barnhart $3 million, who would you pick? You'd pick Posey. That's right. That's right. And by the way, uh, the GM of the Giants says that this might be the worst offer he's ever seen in his, oh, in his career course. so we far. We have to add four more players four? on the far side. Of the field, oh, unfortunately. my goodness. This okay. is a big deal for us, but All it right. gets a great catcher and a couple of good prospects so okay. we need to add on to our side of the deal if you go to the 40 man roster right we need to add on to our end of the deal luke Leftwich. all right it was that's actually a good a name good he we just got him but that's a good name we're gonna we're gonna play uh we're gonna play the game well and we're gonna get left back in about a week <laughs> <laughs> because the Giants are not going to put him on their 40-man roster, and we're going to Rule 5 draft him back. <laughs> now, I don't see Luke on my 40-man. Why oh. is that? Is he a prospect, then? He might be on your prospects list. What position is he? He's a relief pitcher. All right, let's see what we got here. Relief pitcher. Boy, I got a lot of relief pitchers. You might be able to sort it by a potential. He's supposed to be a three-and-a-half-star potential relief pitcher. There he is. Okay. All right. All right. So which is one of them. Uh, if you go back to the 40-man roster really fast, we need to add on Framber Valdez as well. All right. Who is that? It's the relief pitcher. We picked him up from the Houston Astros in the Scott Shebler trade. Okay. But unfortunately, his ratings have gone down since we picked him up, so... That was the first trade we ever did that has not turned out well, but it's going to get us Posey. So you go from Shebler to Valdez to Posey. I think that's a pretty good deal. Okay. All right. So you've got Valdez on the list. We also need to add on to the list a couple of prospects. Um, We're going to be adding on a catching prospect and I believe a relief pitching prospect. So you're going to want to go to the prospects list. Yep. So we're going to be adding on a catcher named Carlos Reina, R-E-I-N-A. Mm. So if you sort it by, if you're, yeah, if you're still positioned sorted, you can go to catchers and add Reina. Okay. And then we're also, actually, you can go ahead and just say make this work now. Okay. Because that'll be a quicker way for us to find this last player. We're looking for uh, a Matt Gill, G-I-L-L. 
Yeah, he's not on their list. What is he, a relief pitcher? Okay, he would have been normally added on that list. Okay, so we'll have to find him on our list instead. If you sort it by, uh, you might be able to see him by just scrolling through. You could also sort it by, uh, actually, yeah, it is sorted by last name, technically. I got so, him. Oh, well, yeah. There we go. And it might be Posey's contract. They may not want to give away or re- keep 85%. Catchers have feelings too. No, they cannot agree to this deal right now. They cannot. His contract down to eighty percent. They like it. It's there amazing. Wow. Okay. It's a couple million. It's a well. It's it's not a couple million. It's like seven hundred thousand dollars, I believe, to do um, even just five percent of someone right. like Posey. So. That's great. That's a good deal. And, you know, we'll pay Posey $3 million for two years, and then he has a team opt contract for $22 million, which we will not accept, unless he somehow resurges and goes back to his four- or five-star potential, which okay. I don't think that's possible as well. Right. But we can absolutely make this deal work as it is right here. All right, so. I'm doing it. I'm pressing the button. Yep. I'm pressing the button. I don't even know what's happened to my team anymore. I am so confused and lost, but that's all right. I trust you. That's, I okay. trust that's you. exactly what we're going to do next is kind of round everything up, get everything you know rearranged, okay. and everybody in the positions are supposed to be playing, and then we'll talk about um, kind of what we need to do next. Now, our fans are ecstatic yeah, that we signed they Buster. Are. They're not happy that we got rid of Tucker, but... They they love Buster, so yeah. they're they're happy about that. So that's a yeah. good thing. It's, it's still a good deal for us. It brings our fan interest up to fifty six. I think we started at like forty okay. back when we got started with the simulations. So we've increased the fan interest. That'll increase our ticket sales, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, it's just it's a really good move for us. Okay. All around. So, um, if you go back to the front office page, mm-hmm. I want to first of all review our money. Okay. That's going to indicate a little bit about where we can go next. All right. So if you go back to the Reds and go back to the front office, mm-hmm. uh, you'll notice that we do have quite a good deal of money left. In fact, yep. we've got $17 million left. $17 million. Left. So we've got some room to work with. Now, we do need to address one big issue, and that is our budgets. Our budgets, unfortunately, are way too low. Uh, in 2019, we had a $5.8 million scouting budget and an $8.7 million development budget. Those are drastically below where they should be. Um, most teams are looking, I, uh, most teams are looking at at least around $10 million for each of those. Um, some teams will go below. Um, the Marlins only did 4.8 and 9.2, but good teams that develop well. Um, have $10 million plus in both of those two areas. You know, if there's one thing that I feel that my years of service in baseball have illustrated, it's that I strongly believe in investing heavily in your player development and your scouting. Absolutely. This will not stand, Alex. We're going to spend some money. (laughs) And that's what I was going to ask you. I would recommend us increase those budgets that will unfortunately drop our available money to spend. But at the same time, we don't want to spend that money and then realize we don't have money to increase the budgets later. Cause that's right. That will hurt us. And I also want to take this moment to actually explain and have you work through the scouting budget and um, understand kind of what we can do to target uh, our scouting in a certain direction. So if you head to our scouting tab, I we'll will start. So my recommendation is increasing our total scouting budget. By the way, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this real quick. Sorry about that. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Save it real fast. So that yep. way we don't lose all this progress. Please. Yep. Please. Yep. So we actually have a pretty good scout. Um, we have a great, 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 excellent. And it's just the reputation that needs to get better. He's mm. otherwise a great scout. He's okay. perfect for us. Okay. And he's cheap. He's only $424,000, which is relatively cheap technically if, yeah if only i was making just four hundred twenty-four thousand dollars oh, yeah. so watch kids play baseball and <laughs> <put> back. <sighs> I, I understand he has a hard job it takes oh, yeah. really good eyes and an understanding of the game so yep. I, I totally respect that absolutely absolutely don't get it wrong he's he's worth it but oh. if i could ever get to that level oh, yeah baby I, 
Oh, yeah. I would retire as a scout for the rest exactly. of my life at that point. Exactly. Okay. So we want to increase our total scouting budget anywhere between eight million dollars and twelve million dollars. That is my recommendation. All right. So we are going to more than double it, right? So like yeah, we're going from five point eight and we're going I'm going all the way. Twelve you want million dollars. Okay. That is what I did on my personal. Uh, I went ahead and did twelve because I thought that was a pretty good number to go with. So I'm glad you agree with me on that. Just got to make sure I got the right number of zeros on there. Twelve. Yeah, that's all the hardest part. <laughs> million dollars, not one point two million, and not a hundred and twenty million. So. Not the Yankees, Rich. We're not the right. Yankees. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. We also need to head. Uh, sorry. Before we head anywhere else, I want you to understand the scouting budget distribution. So. It's real simple. It's not that hard to really understand. Basically, we can put some of our money into uh, one area in particular. So if we wanted to do more scouting in the major leagues or the minor leagues or more into first-year player amateurs or more into the international world, we could tell our scout to do more work in certain areas of the game by sliding around these sliders. So wouldn't it so make sense to match his strengths to where we invest the most money or is that exactly. is that counterintuitive um no that is a good idea it is a good idea to make sure that if your scout is not good at doing like scouting the majors i wouldn't put all your money into scout majors because right. he's probably not going to do that good of a job right. now our scouts great 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 excellent so it's not that bad to say that we can evenly distribute our money a little bit more um what I would do is I would drop all of those sliders to 0%, just so that way we don't have any pre-slider adjustments that we look at and go, oh, well, we don't want to go above and beyond this or anything like that. Okay. So apply those all to zero. Right. I want us to take a good, long, hard look at this and think about it and make some decisions right now. Okay. So we only get 100%, which of course is everything, uh -huh. to be able to distribute to these four different areas. Our scout is very good at the at the amateur scouting, so I think personally, anywhere between twenty to thirty percent for amateur scouting is the minimum. Um, we could probably go up to thirty five, and that would probably be the most I'd ever put into one area. Okay. So I want you to make decisions on where the scout goes because this is it's not going to really adjust too too much. It just this is just going to determine the accuracy. Um, and it's going to be minute accuracy, depending if you do 30 or 35%. Um, but if we go more into international scouting, the players we find that are discovered get better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we wanted to put all of, and this is one of the simulations I've always wanted to try out, is if you put all of your scouting budget into international scouting, mm -hmm. does that guarantee you like five-star international scouts, or does that just give you better chances? <sighs> Oh, so in other words, you're not willing to try this out in one of your franchises, but sure, if it's the big rich machine, you're willing to just see what happens. No, I understand no, where we're, you're coming no, from. No, that would be a stream that I do in the future where I just do a, a <laughs> random stream. I'm like, guys, we're going to put all of our budget into the international scouting and see what happens. Right. Um, but for this one, because our international scout minors and scout majors are all the same, I would probably put... Oh, I think I lost you there for a second. I I heard I will probably put, and that was the last thing that I heard. Oh. There you go. Now you're probably back. put uh, the same amount into major league scouting, minor league scouting, and the international scouting because our scout has the same uh, ability in each of those three categories. All right. So right now I got thirty five percent amateur. 20 20 okay. percent international minor and major so that means i still got five percent left over okay that would be fine if you wanted to do another five percent into the in into the amateur scouting that would be fine or you could do five more percent into the international um international is 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 weird because those are the players that our scout discovers over the course of the season mm -hmm. and sometimes you can get amazing prospects from you know Cuba or the Dominican Republic, or I had someone come up from the Czech Republic who was a four-star prospect one right. time. And it's just like, whoa, where'd this kid come from? Right. So it's it, it's gonna come up to you, Rich. Whatever you'd like to do with that last five percent, that's fine. Whatever you'd like to do, go for it. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I think I'm gonna do, 
We're going to go 35% amateur, 25% international, and then 20 and 20 major and minor. Perfect. I like that idea. All right. That's what we're doing. Okay. So that is how you do basically budgeting for your, uh, for your scouting budgets. Very and good. And you can assign stuff to those. All right. So let's head over to our player development tab, and we'll finish up our budgets really quickly here. Okay. Now you'll notice that our draft budget is huge. <laughs> it is, it's pretty massive right now. Um, I don't know of very many teams that spend $7 million or around $7 million on, uh, on draft budgets. Okay. So we probably want to change that. Okay. I'm just going to throw that up there. What is this stuff? Yeah, $6.6 million on a draft budget. Um, the recommended draft slot amount is pretty much what we probably are looking at paying for draft picks this coming, okay. coming first player draft. So we need to change all three of those budgets. All um, right. The first one of course being the player development budget. Yes. We need to at least hit the baseline, which is $12 million. What about if we go $14 million? We could do $14 million. Um, it's going to... It's going to tie our hands a little bit more of our our free agency budget, but okay. that's okay. We can always change this if we find out we need more money. Okay. So that's the cool part about the budgets is that they're flexible, technically. Okay. Very good. For the draft budget, I would put $3.5 million. That's probably all we're going to need. Okay. Uh, and if we need more, we could try to flex our muscles a little bit with the owner and make him agree to pay more, mm -hmm. but... That should be about as much as we need unless we really get a top-tier prospect who doesn't go in the first 10 picks, or no, first five picks, because the Reds are given the seventh overall pick, I believe, in the 2020 draft. Okay. So they'll get a pretty decent prospect in the first season. Okay. So uh, our international amateur free agency budget is going to be a bit interesting. Technically, $5 million is the most you're allowed to sign in terms of players. That's your cap. When you go over that cap, you get penalized the next year. So we really don't want to do more than five. But personally, I don't really think we want to devote more than like two or three to that. Um, because the international amateur free agency pool, the list of people we get, is very hit or miss. Um, and I don't want to put $5 million and then not get anybody and have those $5 million get devoted to nothing when we could have put it into somebody else. So my recommendation is, is $2 million. Um, that's a pretty good number for us to be able to try to get one or two players that we think have high potential, but nobody else thinks has high potential. Okay. So that's my recommendation for that. All right. Dave Littlefield, for some reason, thinks that's a terrible idea, so I'm doing it. <laughs> he does? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, good. But I'll say, Littlefield will unfortunately not like anything we do. That's right. Uh, which That's is right. weird because we kind of got him to match our own style. That's right, we did, but oh well. I'll have to double check that down the road. Okay, mm, excuse me. Okay, let's go to our rosters and transactions because now we've got our budgets all set. We need to get our team all set. Okay. So if we head to the waivers and DFA tab mm -hmm. underneath of rosters and transactions, we mm -hmm. need to go ahead and put those new players on our 40 man. To get, to get started with. All right, so we want to put them on the active roster or on the secondary 40-man? Secondary 40-man, um, right? I would do just the secondary 40-man for right now because we okay. got to make some decisions about a couple of these guys. Okay, very good. Um, Buster Posey is definitely on the Major League roster. That is, that is a shoe-in. I would say that Zach Houston is probably not going to the Major League roster to start off. He probably should go to AAA. So I'm going to place um, Buster Posey on the active roster? Yes. Let's go ahead and put Buster Posey on the active roster. Okay. What were we doing next? Let's put Zach Houston on AAA's team. All right. Let's, uh, let's see. Who else do we have on this list? We've got Victor Reyes. Let's put Victor Reyes on the Major League team as well. Okay. Let us put... Let's put Dawell Lugo in AAA, if he'll be okay with that. Looks like he's okay with that. Okay, good. He has a little more development to do before he's really ready to go. Okay. We also have on this list... We have Moya, right? Yes. Yeah, we've got Moya. 
Moya, oh boy, he's tough. Um, let's start him on the major league roster as well. All right, he's on the major he, major league roster. He's borderline ready to go. Okay. And I think that's it for All right. players for right now. So let's go ahead and go back to our lineups. Okay. I want us to take a look at our team before right. we think about the next part. Okay. Because this is where it's going to get interesting. Yes. Um. If you go ahead and hit actions, ask the bench coach for all depth charts and lineups, you're going to notice a few things are, are off. Okay. First of all, um, Senzel plays third base, I believe. Yep. Which, uh, that is not correct. So we want to go ahead and right-click on Senzel. Mm-hmm. And we want to go to his set game strategy. Mm-hmm. We want to force start him or use at position and make that second base. Because he is our second baseman by default. All right. So we're going to force start, use that position, second base. Yeah, that is okay. correct. All right. Now, on the top of that page, actually, you can see all the players are right up there. Mm-hmm. We're going to do two more. Okay. Because, unfortunately, we have to teach Adamas how to play third base. He has the arm and the range for it, but he's never played third base in his life. So we need to drag Willie Adamas. Just click and drag him right down to where it says offensive strategy settings, and it'll change it to Willie Adamas. Yep. And then you can select the fourth start and have him start at third base. All right. And then we're going to go to Shinichi Yoshioka, and we're going to do the same thing for him, but instead of third base, we're going to make him play shortstop. All right. And then if we go back to the graphical depth chart and have the bench coach do all the depth charts and lineups again, that will be the corrected graphical uh, graphical depth chart. Okay. Look what at this. Team is looking like right now. I like this a little more than I did last time. So right yeah. now, if the season started today, which it's not because it's still November, but if the season st- – I'm sorry, it's December 9th, 2019 in the game world. Yes. Our starting lineup would be Buster Posey catching, Joey Votto at first base, Nick Senzel at second base, four star potential, um, Shinichi Yoshioka at shortstop, four star potential, Willie Adamas uh, at third base, Travis Jankowski at left field, Alberto, sorry, Albert Amora in center field, and Mookie Betts in right field. That, my friend, is a major league lineup. Yeah, that's it's not bad. Um, I still feel like as if left field and center yes. field are a little weak. A little bit. Uh, Certainly compared to bit. the other positions, right? But, yeah. Um, but I like the way it's looking. And Shinichi Yoshioka could always go and play center field if he wanted to. I, however, believe that his range and arm is actually more suited for our shortstop need right now. Okay, I like it. Um, so we are going to make an audible on Yoshioka because we thought he'd be our center fielder, but in reality, because we got rid of Iglesias, he's going to be our shortstop. So we will sign him for the position he was destined for out of free agency. Right. Now, there is a potential deal down the road that I have in mind where we would trade again with the San Francisco Giants and pick up Kevin Pillar to play center field for us. Okay. But that's after the Rule 5 draft. Okay. So that's about a week out before that deal would be something we look into. Okay. But I just want you to be thinking about, do we want to acquire a third baseman? Do we want to get Moustakis? Do we want to trade for a center fielder? Because if we do that, Yoshioka would go play left, Adamas would play short, Moustakis would play third, and Kevin Pillar would play center. Yoshioka's ability in left field would be fantastic. His range and his arm and his even his medium-ish uh, air, outfield air would be perfect in left field. The problem is I don't think we have enough money for all of those guys. If you mm. go back to our front office, mm-hmm. we should only have like – Five million dollars left. We have ten million dollars left. We have ten. Oh. Oh, that's because I still have an offering out there for some people. Never mind. That's right. That's right. We have ten. So we do have some wiggle room left. 
if we go after Moustakis, we mm-hmm. would lose a little bit more money. Do you still want to go after Moustakis, though? We're better with Moustakis, right? Because we would have, we would have, um, as you said, if we get Moustakis, then Adamas moves to short, Yoshioka yeah. moves to left, so we upgrade in left field. Yeah. Um, Al- Almora still plays center, though, right? So it would be that. Tri- you could have Yoshioka play left or center, and okay. then whoever else would be pushed out of center or left would play the other position. Right. So we have a lot of good outfield prospects or people that could play those positions quite well for us. Um, the the, the in, real question is, if we get Mustakas, it's basically Jankowski goes and Mustakas is in, is, is sort of the the ultimate, right? Jankowski yeah. won't be playing much if we sign Mustakas. Right. Unless value uh, unless we value Jankowski's fielding over Almora's hitting, um, Jankowski actually will play center field slightly, ever so slightly better than Almora will. So there's a world in which Jankowski still plays center field for us. Um, there's also a world in which we end up trading for Kevin Pillar, and he plays a much better center field, mm. and he hits better than both of those two guys combined. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there is a chance that we end up getting Pilar down the road, but that requires us to have some flexibility on our budget because mm-hmm. he is not cheap. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, see. Let's 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 go get Moose and let's okay. let's let's do that. I was hoping you'd say that. We can definitely acquire Moose. All right. All right. So let's go back to our mailbox. Okay. Because we're gonna do more Alex Murray style negotiating. All right. All right. So to explain why we're able to do this, because of the fact that Mike Moustakis came back to us and wants to renew negotiations with us, that means that our offer was either the only offer he got or the highest lowball offer Mm -hmm. he got. Mm -hmm. So what that means is we can go back to that shall we negotiate, shall we resume negotiations, mail, offer him another contract, and we can drop our offer down again. Because no one else has come close. So what we can do is we can offer Musakis another contract. Okay. And um, instead of giving him $11 million, which I think is what we were offering him the first time, Uh we're going to basically cut that in half. What? Almost cut it in half. We're going to offer him $6.5 million now, but we're going to put a couple, we're going to put about a million and a half in incentives. Um, All right. So if you do six and a half for every single year. Wait a second. So where am I? Where am I doing that? So for his yearly contract, we'll right. do six and a half million dollars. Right. I got that. And then the uh, minimum plate appearance bonus down at right. the bottom. Yep. We'll do we'll do five hundred and fifty plate appearances. So it's pretty easy for him to hit it. Okay. And we want to do about a million and a half. So. One and a half million dollars of an incentive for that. Okay. And that's that way he doesn't. Um, Let's. That's so that way he doesn't kind of get beat. Um, yeah. Let's give him like five million bucks if he gets an MVP. What do you say? Sure. Sure. Because we he, he know won't. that ain't ever gonna happen. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Right. Unless he. I mean, maybe that incentive actually makes the game. You know, chucking a couple extra points into his power. And well, there you go. There you go. But at that point, I'd be okay with that because you know you do you you get an MVP out of Mike Mustakis. It's worth five million bucks. It's worth five million dollars. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So the way you make this work is you have to basically ask for a response. Okay. The potential contract value may not be more than twice as high as the contract value if it surpasses the typical above-average player salary. I don't know what that means. Oh, the incentive is too high, I'm guessing. Okay. The five million? So make it it's, it's probably it probably can only be like two and a half million or three right. million. I'll go I'll try three million. See what that works. Oh gosh, yeah, because the potential value if he got an MVP every single year. Yeah. Would be like oh gosh, yeah, that that'd be way too high. Okay. So um I'm gonna ask for a response now, yeah. right? Go ahead and ask for a response on that. That okay. might still be too high, but we'll see. 
It fits his needs. If no All other right. offer, no other team tops the offer, he'll sign. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to go ahead and say meet demand because he agrees to that. But we have to meet the demand that he now has. Well, I, I don't have the meet demand ability. I can only submit the offer. Oh, okay, good. You did it twice. Never mind. That's all. Well, that's good. That's good. All right, um, submit. Sometimes you have to do it in a certain order uh, to make it go through that way. Okay. But that's good. Go ahead and submit that offer because, yeah, we can... We can acquire Moustakis for six and a half million dollars if he'd be okay with that. <clears throat> All right, very good. Submitted. Yeah. Okay, so that gives us about four million dollars left to be able to try to see about upgrading. At this point, it would be either center field or left field. So this is where we're going to get, and and I do need to preference that actually. Mike Moustakis could get beat with some other team's offer, and mm -hmm. we'd have to increase our offer. So. We we kind of do want to assume we have him, but also assume we don't have him until he actually signs. All right. Now, by the way, this is probably a good moment in time for me to say that we are starting the giveaway. We are giving away two prizes of 20,000 perfect points. So if you go into the chat and you type exclamation point ticket, then you will be eligible for a $20,000 prize of perfect points. So go check that out. And we'll run that for another 15 minutes or so before we wrap up this week. All right, Alex, let's get back to it. Okay. So this is where we're going to come into some decision-making for you, Rich. Okay. We need to finalize um, some positions. Mm -hmm. And I want to... to uh, give you an idea or a, a, a question that mm -hmm. I'd like you to think about for a second. Okay. Um, on the free agency list right now, uh -huh. <clears throat> we could pick up Billy Hamilton, who is beloved by Reds fans. He's very popular, and he's very cheap. And if we don't get the ability to upgrade center field, we could try to acquire Billy Hamilton either now or down the road. Um, to not only be a pinch runner for us, but also to be a really good center field defender in terms of fielding. Okay. So I just, I just want you to be aware that he's someone on my radar that I'm thinking about because he's a cheap alternative to going out and getting Kevin Pillar. Um, and that's only if Kevin Pillar really can't have his contract retained by the Giants because he's about $7 million. Uh, one second, uh, Puck stop says, or puck stopper says, you have to drive in about ten minutes. Uh, if you, oh. if you, well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do this. We'll, we'll wrap up the giveaway in in less than ten minutes. And um, if you win it and you're not here, you can just uh, ping me on uh, on Discord or or whisper here. We'll make sure you get squared away though. So we'll we'll yeah. uh, we'll we'll do the uh, we'll do the giveaway in about five six minutes. How about that? Yeah, yeah, we should be able to do it right. here pretty soon because we don't have too too many people. So Billy chat. Hamilton, right? That's what. So we're... Billy Hamilton is an option, mm -hmm. um, and I just want to have you take a look at his profile page, get used to him a little bit because he might be someone that we look into down the road. But <sighs> that's only if, only if we don't go out and acquire someone like a Kevin Pillar um, to upgrade our center field position for the next year. Kevin Pillar is a $7 million contract player. He only has one year left on his contract. And if he has another really good year, he asks for a lot of money. So, so Kevin Pillar is a one-year rental, basically. So Billy Hamilton is a 29-year-old guy who can fly and who yes. plays an excellent defensive center field. And he's yes. a fan favorite. And he is not really good at the plate. No, no, he's not. Um, and that's the one problem. He has better running and better fielding than Almora, but he can't hit like Almora can. He has technically better fielding and I think better running than Jankowski, but Jankowski is um, a better all-around player. He can hit better than Hamilton can as well, and he keeps up with Hamilton in terms of speed and fielding versus Almora, who falls behind a little bit on the speed area. So, exactly, Cardinals fan. If Hamilton could hit 280, he would easily steal 90 bases a year. And if we basically made a, a rule 
that every single game, Billy Hamilton had to come in and pinch run once and steal, we could still get like 60 stolen bases in a season, which would give Billy Hamilton like a 1.5 war, which is pretty good for a pinch runner. So, and, he, and he's cheap. He only wants about a million dollars. I think it's $1.4 million. And that, that's a minor league with a major league option contract. Um, if we waited till preseason or even spring training, we may be able to sign him to an absolute minimum contract, just a minor league would deal. But I don't want to see him go someplace else if he was an option that we were interested in picking up. So, again, Rich, this is just for you to kind of think about. Let me know what your opinion is. I don't think he's worth starting in center field since we have Almora and Jankowski. But I would really like to see if we could keep him as a not only fan favorite, but also a pinch runner. Potentially. And also a defensive replacement as well, right? And a defensive replacement. We could even teach him how to play right field and left field if we wanted to. Then he could replace anybody who got injured. Yeah, I like, I like this. Let's go ahead and let, let's get him, all right? Okay. See if you can offer him just a $1 million minor league uh, with major league. Uh, option deal instead of the 1.4 minor league with a major league option for one million dollars right yeah let's see if he'll go for that he will let us know the decision shortly awesome all right we can go ahead and submit that as well okay done and that's just basically another depth for mm -hmm. the outfield mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. another person that we can throw out there and he technically would be the only i think real speed demon we have on the team mm. so he would actually be a really important little piece that we might really badly need. All right. Before we do anything else, let me say in the next 10 seconds, we are going to wrap up the, uh, the the giveaway so uh, we, can, yeah. we can square that away. So if you haven't entered exclamation point ticket, do it right this second because we're going, we're doing the giveaway in 10. Five. All right, we are going to stop the giveaway now. And you want to see who wins? What do you say? Let's see who oh. wins. Do you want to let uh, one, la one last person come in real oh, fast? Oh, I already hit the button. Sorry, <laughs> no. gang. Sorry, gang. My bad. Sorry, dangerous. Okay, here are the winners. The winners this week are... Number one, Sebastus, our man, Sebastus. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Nice job. Happy for Sebastus, who's always joining us and hanging around with us. We appreciate that. And the other winner is KDM. I don't know how to say this. KDM Joiner. I don't know. KDM, you are also our winner. Congratulations. Hi. Both of you guys have won 20,000 perfect points. Hit me up on Discord is the easiest way to do it, Ritz G. Um, and uh, I'm going to just need your need your username. And um, and that's how we'll make this happen. Yeah. Okay, so we got just a few minutes left. Alex, how do we want to close it out today? You want to close it out by going ahead and simulating a few days, okay, actually. Okay, let's do that. So Because we've made to... all the moves we need to do at this point. We're just waiting to see if, A, we get Moustakis, and, B, we hit the Rule 5 draft. That is the two things we want to do. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's see here. The Yankees signed Will Harris, by the way. So what, yes, I'm looking for, a, looking for a male... Uh, we're looking for a mail, right? So I'm going to hit finish today. It's December 11th. Here's our message. Sangwa M is not happy with our contract. Uh-oh. That's the relief pitcher, right? That's correct. Okay. We need to offer him a extended contract with more money then. Okay. So let's see how much... Um, who's giving him more money? The Yankees? Of course, it's the Yankees. All right. Thinking Yankees. We need to offer him a contract and see how much they want to give him now. All right. So he wants three point six million a year. Let's make it three point eight five and see if that'll 
shoo away the competitors. All right. 3.85 for three years, major league contract? Yes. All right. I'm asking for a response. He says the terms are fair enough. He'll let us know shortly. Awesome. All right. Back to the mail room. Back to the simulating. He was impressed by our offer. He's got to think it over. All right. We're mm -hmm. finishing today. Nothing today. I'm going to finish today again. I'm going to keep finishing until you tell me to stop. Well, it's going to make you stop because you're going to hit the Rule 5 draft That's in a second here. exactly right. <laughs> Always the stinking Yankees. You are so it's right, Cardinals. Always now. the Yankees. All right, so now it's the Rule 5 draft. So here's my question. Do we do the Rule 5 draft now, or do we save this for the next for the next? Nope. Time? We will save the Rule 5 draft, unfortunately, for the next stream. All right. I'm going to hit File Save right now. So what that means is next time, which will be next Tuesday evening at 10 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have the Rule 5 draft, right? That's where we're going to yes. start? All right. Yep. We'll explain how the Rule 5 draft works, what we're looking for in the Rule 5 draft, players we might be interested in, and then we'll actually go ahead and do it. Love it. Fantastic. Alex, you're a genius. <laughs> Not a professing genius, genius, but uh, pretty good at the trade world, at least. Yes. Very good. All right. So that is where we were going to gonna hang it up this week on December 13th, 2019 in game time. Thank you guys for being here. This was a lot of fun. This lunchtime stream, this is something that I could get used to doing every once in a while, Alex. What do you think? Well, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Maybe we could make it a second stream we do occasionally. Maybe. Maybe. It's always fun to see people hop in. You know, I wasn't sure if we would get uh, the same kind of crew, but we did. And that is all because we have at Out of the Park Developments the best community in video games. Absolutely the best. So thank you, everybody, for coming out today. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you for participating. Thank you for the chat. Thank you for being part of the Out of the Park Baseball community. We appreciate it. And... Um, Thank you, Alex Murray, for all that you do, not only on this stream, but just for all of the great work that you do supporting our community. You are fantastic. And, uh, yeah, next Tuesday night, 10 p.m., the Big Rich Machine continues with a Rule 5 draft and more free agency madness, and I can't wait. I don't know that I can wait till next week. I don't know that I can wait. Oh. We're going to have to, so... But yeah, we're, we'll uh, we'll get back to this next Tuesday night. And as always, you know, if we're we're gonna do some uh, some special stuff, we'll let you know. And speaking of special stuff, by the way, tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern, a special episode of This Week in Perfect Team, a Hall of Fame special, where we're gonna be introducing some really cool new stuff. And we've got not only Chris Jardine hosting it, but also I'll be on there. Nobody cares about that. But our ah. our great friend Paul Sporer from Rotograss will be joining us as well. So that is going to be a lot of fun. And then tomorrow night at 10 p.m., right after that show, we'll be picking up the, uh, the my Perfect Team playoff push. So a lot of stuff going on. Um, and once again, thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Alex, for being here. Absolutely. Um, we'll see you again tomorrow and next week and every week after that for forever, right? Yeah, I think that's what we're, what we're going to do. All right, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Cheers, and we'll talk to you again real soon.